This is Sid the Baker. I want to talk to you about pie fillings, or to be precise, savoury pie fillings as opposed to fruit pie fillings, which is an entirely different kettle of fish. I will be dealing with those in later videos. Now, this is the savoury pies, the steak kidney, the cheese and onion, the meat potato. You get the drift. Now, for savoury pies, you will need shortcrust pastry. Shortcrust pastry is something we've dealt with in a previous video and if you follow the link you can go and see that if you don't know how to make it. If you do know how to make it and you want to tweak your recipe up by all means check that one out. Now why are we making our own pie fillings? Well if you want to know what's in your food as most of us do these days the best way is to actually prepare it yourself. You can go to the supermarket and buy perfectly good pie fillings it's entirely up to you, so you can then skip this lesson and go straight on to making the pies. But it's really, really easy. Let's go in the kitchen and find out. What can I say? I'm a genius. Hello once again ladies and gentlemen, this is Sid the Baker. Welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to do some hot pot pie filling. Now, for this you're going to need 8 ounces of minced beef, 6 ounces of diced carrot with mon medium chopped onion, 12 ounces of diced potato, two beef stock cubes, one or two tablespoons of corn flour and some gravy thickener if needed and salt and pepper for seasoning. Don't worry if you didn't get those ingredients they will be on the video later on. Right so first of all we're going to put the onions and carrots together in the pan then we're going to put the minced beef in. Now, we're not going to put the potatoes in yet because carrots and onions take a little bit longer to break down the potatoes. So we're going to put some boiling water in that. And we're only going to go just level with what we've got in there because we don't want too much liquid in. So once you've got your liquid in, that's fine. Right, so we turn the gas on and put the lid on it and we're going to leave it for around about 10 minutes. Now we want to get it just before those carrots and things start breaking down because we've got to have the spuds remember. Right, we're just going to stir it up now just a little bit just to mix it all together. And we're going to leave it about another 10 minutes. This isn't rocket science, ladies and gentlemen. You just have to keep trying it until you think it's right. Now, we don't want those potatoes to cook too much because we don't want them breaking down in the pie. Remember, your pie is also going to cook your filling as well. So, we've been round about another 10 minutes. And I think this is basically ready. Just stick your fork in the potatoes just to see. There we go. Now we don't want breaking up, remember, we want them so that the, the fork just goes into them with just a little bit of resistance. Right, so the next thing, we're going to break the two stock cubes into that. And we're going to stir it around like that, just break it in like that, stir it up, and then break the other one and put that in as well. There's one. And there's the second one going in. Give it a good stir. By the way, you can't see this at the moment, lady, but my wife is watching me to make sure that I'm doing this right for you. So if it goes wrong, we can all blame my wife. Now then, you've mixed the stock cube in the in the pan. The next thing, the corn flour. Remember two tablespoons of corn flour. Now we just want a little bit of water going in this. We just want to make sure that the Corn flour isn't lumpy. We don't add more water to the mix, you see. We want to keep it fairly stiff. And if you just add more liquid, you just got to try and thicken up even worse. So there we go. We're just mixing the corn flour in. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there you go. Now, you're getting it to a sort of a paste. A soft paste. I'm just stirring it back to with a fork. Two tablespoons. And it's coming together now. I think I might put a little bit more liquid in that, just for a little bit of thick. Right, 
There we go. I've not used any more than a couple of ounces of water in that. Cold water, remember? When you use warm water, it'll go lumpy straight out. That's gone nice and milky. So I'm now going to stir that in. And we'll see how thick it goes. Because if it goes nice and thick, then we're not going to need to use any of the really gravy thickener. Well, let's give it a stir and see what happens. There we go. Now, because we're making this into pies, we want it fairly thick. If you don't get it thick and it's juicy, when you bite into your pie, you're going to be wearing this because it'll go all down your front. You want it thick. So you can bite into it and it's not going to run out of the pie. Now at this stage, you can see it now, it's all come together and it's quite nice. At this particular stage now, you can put your salt and your pepper in. So you, you season it to taste, as they say. So I'm going to put, oh, I don't know, a teaspoon of salt in first. Let's see what we do. There's a teaspoon of salt. I'll just stir that up. Like that. I'll just put a couple of shakes of pepper. There we go, a little bit of pepper. Stir it up. Now, can you see that now, ladies and gentlemen? That's, that's lovely. But I will say, at this stage, it is actually not thick enough for pies. But I want to taste it anyway, and I'll tell you why in a second. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. That's lovely. Now, remember we were saying at the start that you don't have to use this for pies, you have to use it for a meal. You see how that is now? You can spoon that onto a plate and you can get some beetroot and you can slice some beetroot on top of it. Put yourself a little bit of bread that we've got on a previous video, follow the links. Get some nice breast bread. And there's a good cheap meal. In fact, I think this is probably going to be my tea tonight because I love this sort of thing. This is a good winter's meal as it is. Put it onto a plate. It's just the right thickness for that sort of thing. Put it onto a plate. A bit of beetroot. A couple of slice, slices of bread. And away you go. Now, we need it thicker because obviously it's going to run out of a pie. So I'm going to use some gravy thickener. And I'm going to put... I don't know, a couple of spoons, a couple of teaspoons, we'll see how we go with that. There's one, two teaspoons. And I'll stir that in. Now this won't only make it thicker, it'll also add a little bit more flavour. See how thick that's gone now? That is perfect for the pie now. So all we've got to do now, tip it out onto something to let it cool off before we put it into our pies. Right ladies and gentlemen, so we've left this meat and potato mix uh, around about an hour or so. It's nice and cold now, it's ready. For, if you notice the, the potatoes, they haven't broken up and that's how you want it. You want it so the potatoes are just nice. Right. Pastry, short crust pastry, remember it's in the previous video, you can get a link on it, you can find out how to do it, if you do know how to do it that's fine, if you don't just go on it, it's dead simple. So we're going to cut round about a third of this pastry off. When you use short crust pastry, never use it all at once, because you don't want to overwork this pastry. When you use pastry a lot it goes tough, so you use it as little as possible. Right, so I've got about a third. I'm actually going to make a steak and, well, steak, it's, it's a steak and kidney pie foil, but we're going to put the meat and potato mix in it. There's the foil. Right, get your own pin. You can sprinkle a little bit of flour down, that's fine. Though your pastry shouldn't be too sticky that you need too much, paint, uh, too much flour. So, just roll your pastry. And it, roll it like that. If it sticks on the bottom, Get your well-known scraper, just scrape it off again, press it down, you've got your scraper, you've got your flour, just sprinkle it down, and you run it out fairly thin because you don't want to eat loads of pastry with your pie. So we've got it like that. There we go, it's fairly thin. 
and then you've got your pie forward. And all you've got to do now is throw it in like that. Now, you need to get the air out of this coil. So, use your thumbs and just press it down lightly, very lightly, and just push it into the coil. If it rips like that, that's fine, don't worry. We'll come to that, back, that piece in a second. But you're pushing the air out. Okay, you've got the air out of the thing, you've pushed in all the corners, get yourself a knife, and just trim it around. So you're just cutting around the edge, watch you don't cut your fingers, just around the edge lightly, it doesn't have to be too fussy at the moment. Right, so I'll trim around it. Now I've got a little hole in my pie there, that's fine. Get a bit of pastry. Let's get a bit of water, and your brush. And just wet the bottom bit like that and stick your pastry over the top. There you go, no one will ever know. Now, what we're going to do next, we're going to get the pie fillet. A big spoon. Just put a gold spoon come in, press it down. That's not enough. That one will. You can get foils of any size, depending what you want to do. Uh, go on the uh, well-known auction site and you can get all sorts on there. Uh, I find it much easier than trying to go around the shops and get the tin foils because if you go on the auction site, you've got the sizes there and then and you just order the size you want. A couple of days later, it's yours. Right, I've just put two spoons full in that. This pie will probably do two people. We'll put the pie in after. When it comes out, we can chop it in half. You've got enough for two people. A few chips with that or something. It'd be lovely. Right. Get your water and your brush wet around the edge, just like that. So wet around the edge, put it on one side for a second. Now that pastry you chopped from around the edge of your pie, you're going to use it as part of the lid. Now remember I said you don't use this pastry too much because it will tough. I've not done anything with that, I haven't pushed it together, I've not done it, it's still in pieces. Put it on the workbench. Chop another bit of your fresh pastry off. And just place it over the top. Now press it down. There you go, it's pressed down. Now you're doing exactly the same as what you did with the bottom, but it's a slightly smaller piece because it's not top to go as far. So then we just there, I've just flipped it over just to get a bit of the flour off. It's on the workbench. So there we go. Now because I haven't messed around too much with this pastry. When we bake it, it won't be tough. It'll be nice and flaky, well, not flaky, but crusty as it's supposed to be. It's, it's a short crust pastry, the clue's in the title. It's short, which means it eats easy, and it's crust, which means it makes a nice crust. Short crust pastry. Right, I've rolled it, place it on the top. Just press it with your thumb and fingers around the edge, like that. And again, trim it with your knife. Now, what you've got to do now, because you made that airtight, you've got to put a couple of air holes in. So I'll put uh, three in this because it's quite a big pie. If you don't put your air holes in, what's going to happen? The air that's in that pie is going to get hot and it's going to expand and it's going to, and it's going to blow the top of your lid off and your gravy and your meat and potato and all that will come squeezing out the sides and it won't look nice. Now, if you want to make it really look professional, just a second. Just get a fork, dip it in the flour, and just press around the edge, just like that. You don't need to, but if you really want to make it look nice, there you go. Now what we do next, we get the, the brush that we have the water on, and we've got a little beaten egg there, and some milk. If you just use egg on its own, it does tend to burn the pie a little bit. So mix it with a bit of milk, put it on your brush like that, and just brush your pie with it. And there you go. Now what we're going to do with that, we're going to leave that for 10 minutes, because we press the pastry out, it needs to rest again, otherwise it will shrink when you put it in the oven. So we're going to leave that for 10 minutes, then we're going to put it in the oven, and then me and the cameraman is going to have this for lunch. Okay. Right, I'll put that on one side. Now, 
while that's resting, I want to show you this. This is a bigger tin, you can get any size tins you want. This is a bigger tin. We're going to make a family sized one. Because what you can do with your family sized one, or even with that one if you like, when you've made it, you can put it in the freezer. Now when you've got it in the freezer, you can keep it as long as you want. You can keep it one month, two months, whatever, as long as it's frozen. Now when the kids are in you up in the morning and they say, can we come round for lunch? You don't have to panic, you say, gosh you can. You get the pie out of the freezer, and within an hour it's defrosted enough for you to bake. Because the filling is already cooked, you don't have to worry about cooking the filling. Now what I've done, I've just got a bit of this spray oil and I've just sprayed the bottom of the tin. Just to make sure that it doesn't stick. They don't usually stick, but belt and braces, just to make sure. Now we're going to do exactly the same as what we did with that. We're going to take a look. We've got the, scrub, the bit of pastry that we had before. We're going to take another lump of pastry. Slightly bigger this time because it's going over that tin. And we just put a bit of flour down. And a bit of flour on top. And again, we pin it out. Don't forget, you never work this pastry too much. If it sticks to your only pin, use your trusty scraper. Scrape it off. You've seen me use the scrapers on the other videos. If you haven't, check out the links. There's lots of interesting stuff on there, including where to get the scrapers from, how to use them, when to use them, all that sort of stuff. Right. Away we go. See that stuff on there? I'll just scrape it off. It's fine. And if you notice the way I use a rolling pin, because I've been doing this for 50 years, I tend to use one hand to hold the pin and the other hand to roll. Put it on, hold it with that hand and roll with that hand. That's the one that stays it, you see. So hold with one hand, push with the other. See? It makes life much easier. But that's just practice with the rolling pin. Now then, put your tin there, make sure it's big enough. Not quite. Just push it into shape again. A little bit more. There we go. Now, because this is a short crust pastry, and you've made it correctly to my recipe, you should be able to just lift it up. If it was any shorter than that, i.e. it breaks up here, you wouldn't be able to lift it up. You'd have to wrap it round your rolling pin, like that, and do it that way. But this, it's quite easy. Lift it up, throw it on. It's all in practice. Don't worry about making mistakes when you're baking, or even when you're cooking. You learn by mistakes. You don't learn by getting things right all the time. And you experiment with flavours and you experiment with all, all sorts of stuff. Just enjoy yourself in the kitchen. If it's not enjoyable, it's not worth doing. Right, exactly the same as before. Trim it. Just like that. There's your base. Right, get your fill in again. Just put as much in as you need. Don't overfill these pies because all that will is it will burst out. You just want it slightly from the top. I think we might just about have enough in this to do this size pie. There we go, just put all that in. Incidentally, all the pies that we're going to be making, which will be on the links, you can do this one. You can freeze any of the pies that we're making because all of them will have cooked fillings inside them. If they've got a cooked filling, you don't have to worry about whether they're cooked enough when you bake them later on because the filling is already cooked. So, I've done that. Put a bit of flour down again. Let's just get me brush. Put a bit of water around the edge. Exactly the same as the other one. Like that. Scraps of pastry, just as it is, don't mess around with it. And try and judge how much pastry you're going to need. Again, it's just experience that gets you to know how much. Press it all together, put your flour down, a little bit of flour on top, and start rolling it out again. Then lift it up, put the 
Mow down again. Like that. And that's ready now. That's going on the top. There you go. Put that on there. Press it around. Make sure it's on nice and tight. And trim it around again. So each time you use the pastry, the scratch you have all with using the next piece. And that way your pastry won't be tough. Right, I'm just going to put a few marks in that, a few holes in the top. I'm not going to go around the edge of that because I can't be bothered. Some of the kids coming around, they just want to eat the food, they don't care how it looks. And you just put your egg wash on like that. That's ready for the freezer. Right, so we've been around about 10 minutes and we're now going to put this pie in the oven. Now we're using the pan oven, remember, and we've got it set for 150 degrees on the pan oven. If you haven't got a pan oven and it's an ordinary oven, add an extra 50 degrees on your temperature. Now what we're going to do, we're going to put it round about an inch from the bottom again. Most of the stuff we bake, we bake near the bottom of the oven. That makes sure that the heat from the bottom of the oven comes up through the tin foil and cooks the bottom of the pie at the same time that the top of the pie is being cooked. So there it is, it's in the oven. I'm going to leave that for about half an hour, then we're going to have a look at it. Okay, so the pie has been round about half an hour, and as you can see, it's a nice golden brown on the top. And because we've kept it near the bottom of the oven, I'm certain that it's cooked underneath as well. Now I'm just going to put it on there, and in about 10 or 15 minutes when it's cooled down enough, I'm going to show you what it's like and I'm going to cut it open. Right, so it's been around about 10-15 minutes and the pie should be just nice and cool now. Now, if I just put that over, I'll do it that way. As you can see, the pastry is perfectly cooked underneath because we kept it an inch off the bottom of the oven, remember. If you have it any higher, then there's a chance that the pastry won't cook. Well, that's cooked lovely, so I'll put it on like that. Then I'm going to get my knife, I'm going to cut it in half, and we're going to have a look at what the filling's like. See that filling now? It's just nice and moist, it's not running out of the pie. Let's go on that piece on there, like that. That is comfort food.